Tibet, situated in Central Asia. Once a sovereign nation is known as the roof of the world. Resting on the majestic Himalayas, the country has a population of 6 million and a land covering 2.5 million square kilometers with rich diversity of flora and fauna. Buddhism is the predominant religion of the majority of Tibetans and is an integral part of their way of life. The main form of livelihood is nomadic in the northern part of Tibet and semi-agricultural in the southern regions. Known for its rich cultural heritage, Tibet was forcefully occupied by the Chinese Communist regime in the year 1959, and as a result, the spiritual and political head of Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, had to leave Tibet along with 80,000 Tibetans and seek asylum in India. The Indian government, under the leadership of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the then Prime Minister of India, and the respective state governments, hosted the Tibetan refugees in various parts of India and extended all assistance for their rehabilitation. His Holiness the Dalai Lama established the Central Tibetan Administration in Dharamsala, India, to look after the welfare of the Tibetans in exile and to restore freedom in Tibet. Ever since seeking asylum in India, one of the most important visions of the Central Tibetan Administration of His Holiness the Dalai Lama has been the long-term rehabilitation and strengthening the sustainability of Tibetan settlements. During the initial stages of the resettlement program, the first generation of Tibetan refugees faced many challenges and hardships as the land provided by the respective state governments were mostly barren forest lands. Through a great deal of effort, Tibetans in exile were able to overcome these challenges and set up schools, monasteries, hospitals, and registered cooperative societies to support farmers and generate employment, in addition to preserving the distinct Tibetan traditional arts and crafts. The Central Tibetan Administration has a full-fledged democratic setup with elected leaders. With a Supreme Justice Commission, a parliament, and a cabinet as the three pillars of democracy, the administration has dedicated departments such as religion and culture, home, security, education, finance, health, information, and international relations that collectively work for the welfare of the Tibetan people and envisions a peaceful resolution to the Tibetan issue. Yakia 
지금도 지저로 가르카르도가 지도로 가르카르도가 아니 구두제 쇠도제 다 독선인 열대 나오지. The first Tibetan Cooperative Society was registered in April 1963 in Dharamsala. Since then, 14 more cooperative societies were formed and registered in the major Tibetan settlements across India. Ever since its establishment, the Tibetan cooperatives have served as the foundation for the rehabilitation and sustainability of the Tibetan settlements in exile. To date, there are three service cooperatives and 12 agriculture-based multi-purpose credit cooperative societies. These cooperatives ensure economic, social, and cultural development of the settlers, particularly those of share members. Namuso Number <laughs> Number Today, the 15 Tibetan cooperatives run more than 150 units. Of these units, the agricultural input unit, which is of prominent importance, is engaged in the supply of fertilizer, urea, and seed to farmers on credit. Cooperatives also purchase agriculture produce from farmers in lieu of the agriculture inputs earlier provided to them on credit. The produce is then stored in warehouses and sold to big companies when prices rise. As the majority of the farmers cannot afford a tractor or a corn shelling machine, the cooperatives also run a tractor section in order to help farmers plow their farmland, transport the crops from the farm to their home, and shell corn. In addition, most of the cooperatives run tractor workshop stations, which provide repair services to tractors owned by the cooperatives or individual farmers. Cooperatives also provide agriculture loans on subsidized interest rate as per state government's regulations to farmers. <laughs> Salut, 
Cooperatives help in preserving the Tibetan culture and identity by maintaining the unique traditional handicraft practices of Tibet and promote these artifacts among other nationalities. The Carpet Weaving Center is another common unit among the cooperatives, which manufactures traditional Tibetan carpets and helps generate employment. Tibetan carpet weaving is one of the most exotic crafts of the world, and the enchanting product remains one of the best attractions of the Tibetan culture. The incense making section, which is found in most cooperatives, produces quality traditional Tibetan incenses and aids in the preservation of ancient Tibetan practices. The art of making incense remains the same from the very beginning of the Tibetan traditions. The incense is made of rare herbs. The raw materials for the incense are collected from Himalayan mountains, and it is prepared by the blending of rare herbs proportionally based on the age-old tradition of incense making. All the cooperatives have fair price shops that sell groceries and other essential commodities at nominal rates, and these help avoid the manipulation of prices by private dealers. Since all the sources of drinking water in Tibetan settlements are underground water, over the years, many sources of drinking water have become contaminated by chemicals and in some cases with bacteria. Out of concern for the health of the communities in exile, many of the cooperatives have set up water treatment plants with UV and reverse osmosis systems. These water treatment plants ensure the supply of safe drinking water to members and the general public at nominal rates. Take a Tibetan cooperatives also have shopping centers in the settlements, and these centers not only help generate income to cooperatives, but also encourage entrepreneurship and small businesses by its members. With the growing influx of tourists and visitors into the various Tibetan settlements, the shopping centers have now become tourist attractions, ensuring more business for the shops and revenue for the members. Tibetan entrepreneurs run various businesses like restaurants, travel agencies, internet cafes, garment shops, handicraft shops, grocery shops, stationery shops, and so on. The cooperatives also run several other sections to benefit its members, 
as per their requirements, including cement block making units. This unit is essential for construction of buildings, houses, and fencing at farm areas. Cattle feed is one of the most essential commodities for farmers who do dairy farming. The feed, which is composed of nearly 20 nutritious ingredients, is good for health and increases milk productivity in cattle. Free from chemicals and safely packed in gunny bags, this product is in huge demand, not only among Tibetans, but is also in popular demand among the local Indian community. Petrol stations within the settlements give convenience to the settlers. Since the petrol stations regulated by the Cooperative Society maintain high standards of purity and quality, it is popular among the local Indian community as well. All Tibetan cooperatives run flour mills. Flour mills are essential for processing and making of sampa, roasted barley, the staple food of Tibetans. Without this unit, settlers would have to travel to local Indian towns. The cooperatives also maintain guest houses and community centers, school buses, hostels, creches, dairy farming, Western Union centers, noodle making units, and internet cafes. <laughs> Yenne as per the Cooperative Act and bylaws, Tibetan cooperatives take deposits and advance loans to its members for agriculture, sweater business, and other purposes. Tibetan cooperatives also hold a special responsibility of safeguarding their members' hard-earned money. Today, Tibetan cooperatives have over 700 million rupees in member deposits and grant 120 million rupees as loans to its members every year. For many years, Tibetan cooperatives had operated without interacting or communicating with each other. Hence, there was no common forum for the exchange of ideas and information with regard to the various aspects of its functioning. This limited the scope for strengthening the cooperative movement within the Tibetan community. In addition, the cooperatives faced a common problem in marketing their handicraft products. As a result, there was a growing need to bring all the cooperative societies to function under a single apex body in the form of a federation. With the consistent guidance from and detailed planning by the Central Tibetan Administration, the first federal body of the Tibetan cooperatives was legally registered as the Federation of Tibetan Cooperatives in India Limited on 20th April 2005 under the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act 2002. The Federation of Tibetan Cooperatives directly benefit more than 24,000 Tibetan refugees who are shareholders through various programs that ensure educational and financial enhancement, employment generation, and rural development. FTCI employs more than 160 staff in five units, and its member cooperatives have more than 600 employees. 
The cooperative societies of the 15 Tibetan settlements serve as a backbone to the Central Tibetan Administration through the implementation of various programs and ensure growth and development in their respective settlements. While the CTA develops the strategies and policies that improve the basic standards of living, education, and health care, the cooperative societies focus on people's income generation, employment opportunities, and convenience. FTCI also envisions diversification of new business activities and improvement of infrastructure in existing businesses. Based on its objective of social intervention for welfare and capacity building, FTCI provides financial assistance to Tibetan refugees through scholarship for professional studies, educational support to children of cooperative employees, relief fund to members in the event of drought or natural disasters, and free Medicare to poor and needy Tibetans. <laughs> Rimbi Rangari, Chigigata FTCI contributes 15% of its net profit to the Central Tibetan Administration. FTCI organizes an annual conference during which delegates participate and discuss topics ranging from the annual report to the annual budget, challenges, success stories, new innovations, and future projects, among others. An annual general body meeting of FTCI is held once a year, during which the chairman of each of the 15 member cooperative societies participate to represent their society. The board of directors is responsible for laying out the policies and guidelines with meetings held on a quarterly basis. Every year, the FTCI gives a Tibetan Entrepreneur of the Year Award to recognize and encourage Tibetan entrepreneurs. The recipient of the award gets a shield, certificate, and cash prize as an acknowledgement of their outstanding performance and contribution. FTCI helps its member cooperatives to get subsidies, project funding, and other benefits from the state and central government of India, as well as from international sources. FTCI gives training for CEOs, accountants, and board of directors of member cooperatives and free of cost management training at the Regional Institute of Cooperative Management to students with the potential to serve at the Tibetan cooperatives. The cooperative system of economy is the middle way economic system between the capitalism and the communism. It is a social enterprise 
which is most democratic. In an effort to achieve His Holiness the Dalai Lama's long vision of rehabilitation and sustainability of Tibetan settlements, cooperative societies have been formed and duly registered in all the major Tibetan refugee settlements in India. I strongly feel that uh, there is a tremendous scope for growth and expansion of Tibetan cooperatives. In order to strengthen the Tibetan freedom movement and to preserve Tibetan national identity, it is very important to make our community self-reliant and self-sufficient through improvement of economy. To achieve this vision, we must strengthen our cooperative movement. On the basis of importance of this vision, FTCI and the Tibetan cooperatives have initiated many new innovative projects in recent past. We have several innovative and development projects under its pipeline, hence I earnestly request you all to support and cooperate in our cooperative movement. FTCI has its chain of hotels branded as Hotel Tibet at Gangtok, Dharamsala, and Bangalore. These hotels have well-furnished AC and non-AC rooms with multi-cuisine restaurants, cafes, and emporiums with traditional souvenirs, and they provide conference and banquet services and outdoor catering. Hotel Tibet in Bangalore is a new unit started in the year 2011 and is located in the heart of the Bangalore city at Koramangala. It is a part of the Tibet Mall. The Tibet Mall is the first of its kind theme mall, a new initiative of the FTCI. It has 26 boutiques, a Tibet salon and spa, Tibetan healing and wellness center, a Tibetan emporium, Hotel Tibet Restaurant and Lodging, Travel Services, and Western Union Services, among others. The FTCI Bailakupi Branch Unit also runs the Nyamde Bus Service, an air-conditioned and video coach bus operates daily between Bailakupi and Bangalore. FTCI has its own design and manufacturing section for bags and jewelry. Formerly known as the Tibetan Refugee Self-Help Handicrafts, FTCI Export Unit of Delhi was started in the year 1981 under the management of the Department of Home of Central Tibetan Administration until its privatization in the year 2006. This unit is also engaged in marketing and exporting of Tibetan artifacts and handicrafts like bags and jewelry. Tibetan Organic is the brand name for the entire organic produce grown by Tibetan organic farmers. Organic produce is cultivated in all major Tibetan agriculture settlements in India. Due to the diverse conditions of the various settlements, the cooperatives are able to produce a comprehensive range of quality organic products such as spices, cereals, pulses, oil, seeds, fruits, and vegetables. FTCI markets the organic produce cultivated in these agriculture settlements through fair price shops and shopping centers. <laughs> As part of its upcoming projects, Nyamde Finance, the financial body of FTCI, will provide short and long-term business loans, vehicle loans, agriculture loans, education loans, and household goods loans to its members with minimal paperwork and at low interest rates. FTCI Bailakupi Unit will set up a packaged drinking water treatment plant and sell purified water in bottles under the brand name Aqua Tibet. <laughs> Sounds 
Çünkü çağırlamıyor onu. Sen de sinir ya, sen de malum gibi. Ben tuşu.